SSL Family Dad channel. Uh, today we're doing, what are we doing? We're planting millet. Uh, something that I've never done before. <laughs> it's something that um, I've not actually seen done before either. So we're just going to wing it here and see what we can grow. We have the old pumpkin patch. If you haven't seen last year's series on growing a thousand pumpkins, uh, a thousand pumpkin plants anyway, uh, I'd entice you to check that out. It's pretty interesting. That's when we first uh, tilled up this piece of property back here and changed it from a hay field into uh, something that we could plant other things in. Because this year in Michigan has been such a disaster as far as uh, planting and, and the mud and everything else, uh, about a month ago I was able to get out here and till this, um, till all the weeds under. I had weeds that were two, two, three feet tall out here. Uh, but it was just so wet, I just couldn't get, couldn't really get out here. And even running the tiller through the, the soil at that point was really muddy and it was really hard on the tractor. Now things have dried out and, uh, and it's, it's almost August. And I'm looking for something, a, a late, late season crop I can grow. So with a little bit of research, I, it sounds like millet might be the, the best option. And so I picked up a 50 pound bag from a semi-local uh, seed store, uh, feed and seed place. And uh, we're gonna give this a shot. I'm gonna try it out. And so I bought a cheap little, well, I guess it was a cheap, like 60 bucks a little seed spreader, uh, grass spreader, you know, a little lawn fertilizer thing you push around. Uh, so I have that that I can use to kind of broadcast the seed out here. Um, I don't have any bigger like three point seeders or anything like that yet. And so we're just gonna kind of wing it here and see what we can get. But the millet is basically what my plan is, is it's something I figured that I could grow. It gets a grain head on it. It's kind of like, it's a grain of some sort and uh, it does have some good nutritional value. It'll keep this plot covered for the next three months, you know, with something growing in it, which you always want to have seeds and you always want to have roots in the ground. You always want to have things growing. You don't want to leave, leave uh, you know, stuff barren. And the other purpose for the millet is I'm going to try to feed it to our pigs and our goats. We're going to have a few pigs still for a while here through the winter, probably. We're slowly kind of selling them off and, and whittling that down. Uh, we're just going to take that operation down to the small scale possible and eventually end it unless I can get out here and redesign my pig operation before that. But uh, uh, millet, I, I can use my hay equipment, I can use a sickle bar to cut it, and I can use my rake to rake it, and I can use my baler to bale it. And that's how we'll harvest it and store it. Uh, so we'll let it dry out, we'll, we'll store it in the barn as a bale of millet, which basically will, the goats and the pigs will eat all the seed heads off of, if I just throw a bale in there or flakes of it in there. And then the rest of it is basically straw, and that'll break down for bedding for them and all that kind of stuff. They may eat the stalks too, I don't know, we're gonna see. This area back here could be, I don't know, it's probably three quarters of an acre or something like that, maybe half of an acre uh, of, of property. Um, and so uh, we'll see what we get out of it. I, don't, I have no clue what will happen. I'm not gonna use any weed control, I'm not gonna use anything. We're just gonna plant it, spread it, and, uh, and see what happens. Uh, if it gets weeds in it, we'll bail those right into the goats will love them. So that's totally fine. We've got some more prep work to do out here, some more tilling to do to get rid of the grass that's uh, that's out here and get the soil nice and, and fluffy and we'll broadcast our seed and then we'll find a way to, to uh, bury it with a little bit of dirt and hopefully it rains later this afternoon and, and uh, gets it nice and wet. So uh, let's get to work. that freshly tilled up soil man does it look look good and all the the grass and stuff like that that uh, had just started to grow you can see some of the green stuff right there that'll all die it's all uprooted and, and stuff uh, but all that grass and the roots and everything are all 
in that soil but just look at how nice and fluffy this stuff is all that grass in there will break down real nice and the worms and the bugs and all the decomposers will start to get at it and so this should be a nice nice soil for the millet unfortunately it looks like it might rain sooner than i thought so i need to get the seed spread out here quick that's what the millet seed looks like it's almost like a, a wheat berry um, round little little seeds so I'm gonna start pretty low probably I don't know maybe I'll start at like a four and then we'll see how thick it's spread now and if I get done with the whole thing and I've got extra I can always go back out and run it over it again Well, it's a lot easier to pull it than it is to push it, that's for sure. It's going to be a lot more work than I thought it was. <laughs> I didn't want to get a broadcast spreader for the back of the tractor because I just figured driving an 8,000 pound tractor back and forth over the soil that I just tilled is going to be counterproductive. I wanted to keep it fluffy, so I figured this would be, <laughs> be easy. Well, I'll keep going. That was Matt from Motor Vehicle Services. I guess my warranty's expired on the car. <sighs> Thanks, Matt. Well, that's it. That was perfect amount. Literally as soon as I finished, it started raining. So the next thing I need to do is cover that seed. I don't want the birds to all come and eat it, and I need it to be packed around some soil so that it can be stay, you know, stay moist and germinate. It's got a chain link fence to drag around, but what can I use to drag it around that won't disrupt the soil too much? I can't really use the big tractor. The little tractor doesn't have a lot of power, and the mower duck will probably get stuck in the mud. Hmm. Kind of working, but not really. But I'm not sure the old pink four wheeler's up for that uh, that kind of struggle. It, it really <laughs> it's kind of too much for it to pull this. But I could try the garden tractor.
the old simplicity is uh, it worked pretty good. Um, there's still some seed that's not covered, but I would say we got about 80% of it that's uh, that's pretty well covered. So you can still still see a lot in here. But I think after we get a good thunderstorm coming through here, a lot of that stuff will will get uh, kind of washed in a little bit too. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. This is what the area looks like. You can see all the seed in the ground here. This is how it was seeded. This was not covered. Uh, in this area right here. I just missed this spot. So that's what it was was like uh, before I ran the, the fencing over it. This is what it's like after the fencing runs over it. So I would say 80% of that is, is covered, maybe 75 to 80%. So that's, that's not too bad. This little device uh, didn't work too bad <laughs> for throwing it together in 10 minutes. I had a couple bricks to put on there. I added some weight to it and it didn't work too bad. But I think the trick next time I do this is to have more fencing. So if I had this come back maybe a little bit longer and add more bricks to it, I could put a brick in the middle there and then maybe another line of bricks along the back and then maybe pull it with the bigger tractor. Uh, I think that might work. Well, it hasn't, hasn't really rained since that little sprinkle. But it's going to rain soon. Whenever I'm planting stuff like this, even in our garden, I try to plant it so that we can plant and then it will rain. Uh, rain is just the best way to water seeds. <laughs> um, sprinklers are fine and all that kind of stuff and they're, you know, you can get a nice gentle sprinkler, but rain is nice and even, uh, really waters everything in, especially if you get a good, good thunderstorm rolling through here in the, in the summer. And so uh, hopefully this rain will come on the next hour or so and, and soak this field really good. Otherwise, I might have to drag hoses and sprinklers out here. Nature could really save me some time if, if it would just rain, which I think it's going to. Well, we're just waiting for this storm to roll in now, and so uh, I got everything put away in time and uh, everything planted. So mission accomplished for today. Uh, hopefully the millet will grow. I've never grown millet before. Uh, you know, I know that there's going to be a lot of weeds and other stuff that are going to, you know, grow up in there. I don't really have a plan for weed management out there. I'm not mulching. I'm not using straw. I'm not planting in rows or tilling or anything. I'm just, just spreading the seed and what grows grows. And then at the end of the year, uh, whatever we harvest, we're going to bale. Uh, we'll dry it, bale it, and then that will be uh, a food for the goats through the winter time, the pigs through the winter time, uh, possibly the horses. I don't know if they'll eat it or if they'll like it, but. Uh, we're going to try it out. The thing with millet is that it's super cheap. It grows very fast, and it's it's used as a cover crop a lot of times because it uh, uh, because it does grow so fast, and because it really is known to kind of choke out weeds and other things. And so uh, we'll see. Like I said, uh, we'll take you guys along for that. The wheat slash weed patch <laughs> over here by the greenhouse. I'm just looking at that. The wheat is ready to harvest, and so we're going to go through there, and, and we're going to cut all the weeds and all the wheat down, and then we'll uh, we'll have to separate it, and we'll separate it all out. Um, we'll start uh, finishing the, the drying process for those grain heads on the wheat, and then we're going to have to thresh it, and we're going to have to get the seeds out. Harvesting that wheat's going to be going to be quite the process, I'm sure. But uh, that'll be coming up here soon, as well. Lots of other good stuff. So stick around, of course, and subscribe if this is your first time here. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video, which always makes a big difference for us. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.